welcome to this session from Streets Movements to Action at the Ballot Box. I'm Alexandra Harris. I'm president of the Andrew Goodman Foundation, and I have the distinct honor of welcoming Representative Mondaire Jones and John Grinspan to the panel. Welcome. Thank I'm you so much for having us. <laughs> I'm going to give just brief bio so people know the greatness that we're in the presence of, which they probably already do. Representative Mondaire Jones is serving his first term as congressman for New York's 17th district, which encompasses Rockland County and Westchester County. He's a Stanford University grad as well as Harvard Law School grad. Um, he's a co-founder of a nonprofit called Rising Leaders which teaches professional skills to underserved middle school students in three American cities. In Congress, he's fighting for COVID-19 relief, living wage for all and universal health care, as well as racial justice and climate action. He serves as the freshman representative to leadership in the 17, 117th Congress, making him the youngest member of the Democratic House leadership team. He also serves as deputy whip for the Congressional Progressive Caucus and co-chair of the LGBTQ Equity Caucus. Welcome, Representative Jones. Thank and you so much. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And then we have John Grinspan, who is curator of political history at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History and the award-winning author of The Virgin Vote, How Young Americans Made Democracy Social, Politics, Personal, and Voting Popular in the 19th Century. His new book is <laughs> The Age of Acrimony, How Americans Fought to Fix Their Democracy, 1865 to 1915, an important year. Um, his, he frequently writes for the New York Times and elsewhere and has been featured in the New Yorker the Washington, and the Washington Post. And what I think is really interesting is that John attends elections and protests around the country and, co and collects objects for the Smithsonian's collections, which is super cool. Again, thank you both for being here. We have ambassadors who are watching right now and who are engaged in this very panel. And a lot of them have questions about how they can be really active and how their efforts on the street, as we're calling it, affect American politics. So I wanna start with you, John. Can you speak to the power of youth in the, basically in the progress of social movements and how the past, um, from the past they've gained momentum in present day? Yeah, young people have had decisive roles in street movements and in electoral democracy throughout our history. That we, we have the sense that young people have been off on the sides or not engaged or emerged with, uh, I don't know, civil rights or the baby boomers or something like that. But really as far back as you can go, there are young people on the ground, especially as kind of the foot soldiers of democracy, organizing the rallies in the streets, kind of bearing the brunt, handing out leaflets and ballots and all of that. So across American history, you can show diverse populations of young people really playing a formative role in, in not just deciding who, who wins elections, but building democracy on the ground in, in a new country where no one knows how it's supposed to work. So we have moments like Abe Lincoln's election, when he wins election and you know the subsequent emancipation, civil war, all these things happen because he wins the youth vote essentially in the North. So you can go throughout all of American history and at sometimes young people get more acknowledgement and credit for their role than others, but they're always playing a role. We go through the Smithsonian collections and we have objects from 16 year olds, 18 year olds, and we're out on the street today collecting posters from every youth movement happening today. So you're already a part of history, I guess is what I would say, and just kind of acknowledge and own that role. I love that. Representative Jones, can you think of ways that young people impacted or the youth movement impacted this last election? Oh my goodness. Um, yes, you know, I, I saw it in my own race for Congress, which was concurrent with the presidential race. Uh, young people rallied, they called people, they sent text messages, they persuaded voters, including their parents. Um, they knocked on doors uh, when COVID permitted. And, and when COVID didn't permit, they found other ways to reach really millions of, of voters, including in swing states like in Arizona and in Georgia um, and, and in Pennsylvania and in Wisconsin. 
Uh, and, you know, to my, my friend John's point, young people have been leading political movements for as long as this country has existed. Uh, more recently, which is to say a generation or so ago, uh, during the civil rights movement, I think of the late great legendary John Lewis, who was in his early 20s when he spoke at the March on Washington. Um, you know, obviously MLK was not an elder statesman, so to speak, at the time of his passing. I mean, he was, he was leading the movement in his 20s. Uh, and so I'm quick to remind young people that when they get discouraged or they think or wonder, uh, you know, whether there is a place for them at the helm of the social justice movements of today, uh, the fact is there is a long tradition uh, in this country and also in other countries uh, of young people really not waiting for permission uh, from older people to, to lead, to do the right thing, to, to, to be vocal about what is right and what is wrong, uh, even when uh, they need to move popular public opinion uh, in another direction. Uh, it's been young people doing that. And we saw it during the Black Lives Matter movement, which is still ongoing. Uh, in my district, uh, which uh, is in Westchester and Rockland counties, we saw we score we saw hundreds and hundreds, really thousands of, of young people, and including a lot of young white people, say, "Look, like racial injustice is wrong," and they brought their parents with them, uh, and they have made all the difference. Yeah, and well, so I love that point you just made, Representative Jones. I'd love to hear from both of you. A lot of our ambassadors say. Um, they want to find ways to encourage their classmates to stay engaged when they feel discouraged. Um, and what are some things that young people can tell their classmates to keep them engaged if they feel like, you know, my time's better served protesting. Why should I vote or why should I be engaged typically? My answer, and I hope this isn't discouraging in itself, is that that's how you make huge change, that you can make significant change protesting, you can change hearts and minds, and that's really significant. But we've seen the power in, in the past few years of an election, just one election or two elections to decisively change millions of humans' lives. And if you really want to have that huge impact, electoral politics just offers a venue to do it that 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 is really just going to the source of it. I, I think maybe I hope this isn't anti-inspirational, but I think if you begin with moderate expectations for the change you can make in the world, then you can really have significant impact. Sometimes we tell young people, you can fix everything and you can solve all our problems. And you can see this in American history. And, and as they grow up and they see they, they can't solve everything in a few years, they burn out a little bit. But if you build in really kind of holistic, sustainable engagement that you're going to campaign in this election, hope make things, to make things a little bit better or organize this event that will move things along, keep the ball moving forward. You can really over, over years have a huge impact in millions of people's lives. So I, I think the, it, some of it starts with how we, how we engage in the beginning. And those people who are trying to build long-term sustainable engagement, like, like the late John Lewis is a perfect example of a young start in politics and then a lifetime of continuity after that. that mm. I think that's really how you make huge change in the world. And it, it does start even before you can vote, when you're 15, when you're 12. If you're paying attention then, and this is how they used to do it in the 19th century, you talk to 10 year olds about politics and by the time they could hopefully vote at 21, then they're really engaged. So I think it's incumbent upon young people to See, see the change it can make and on older people to bring young people into the conversation at a really early age. I think that a lot, as important as events like this are, a lot is on the adults in the room, you know, to bring young people in and to listen as they, as they engage. That's great. It, it has been demonstrated that had young people not turned out last November, uh, the result of the presidential election uh, would have been very different. Uh, and this country today would have been very different. Uh, you know, I think of the fact that Congress has passed the American Rescue Plan, which has led to the vaccination of, of, of so many people in this country, including nearly 70 percent of, of adults in this population getting at least one shot. I mean, we are we are we are able to now have a, a civil rights division at the Department of Justice uh, that is that is uh, once again uh, committing resources to investigating police misconduct, which was one of the one of the various goals of the Black Lives Matter movement led by young people. Uh, you know, we, we are hopefully on the verge of, of 
protecting the fundamental right to vote in this country, which is under assault uh, in so many different states, in Florida and Georgia and Texas and elsewhere, uh, we would just not be able to be in this situation right now had young people not shown up at the polls uh, last uh, last year. And I hope that people see that. You know, I'm, I'm a leading proponent of the cancellation of student debt. Yes. We've, we've got a president who's, you know, who is at least thinking about it. Um, and 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 that is a direct result. And it, it, it isn't, as John said, it's, it's not like, you know, uh, every problem has been solved in these in the first few months of this year, uh, but it has still made a world of difference, literally a world of difference, uh, as we think about the way this country is viewed internationally and what we can do abroad in our, our relationships with other countries. Uh, so I'm thrilled by the possibilities uh, that that young people have really been taken advantage of and, and the opportunities. Representative Jones, I want to put back to you the question about how young people who are leading these street movements can work with elected representatives what can they do to partner better this is a great question um so please do not hesitate to reach out to your elected official um including people who don't represent you uh, but who should be doing the right thing in office uh, let them know what matters to you. I, I could, I'll, I'll speak firsthand as a, as a member of Congress that like my office keeps track of how many people are reaching out to us, what they're reaching out about, whether they're in favor of something or opposed to something. Mm -hmm. How many letters have we received this week? How many phone calls have we received this week? What does it seem like the district is feeling about any number of issues? Um, and of course, you know, as elected officials, uh, we cannot have every single thing on our minds at once. And so it's helpful for young people to remind us uh, about things like climate and racial justice uh, and rights for the LGBTQ plus community uh, and the need to uh, combat rising anti-Semitism uh, and so many other things that are happening right now uh, that may not be infrastructure. Uh, or, 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 or something else. Um, and of course, people should, young people should also be like reading for interest themselves. A lot of the problems that we have in Congress right now are not ideological, though there, there are plenty of problems resulting from that. Uh, it, it is about the fact that um, you've got folks of a different generation who don't bring a sense of urgency around the issues that we do, uh, like climate uh, and racial justice and the student debt crisis. Uh, people who don't know what it's like to experience those things uh, because they are used to living in a or coming of age in a different era when it was cheaper to go to college and when wages were better um, and, and so on and so forth. And so I encourage young people not to wait their turn, uh, but to consider themselves uh, as as potentially very strong candidates for elected office themselves. That's great. And John, I'd love to hear from you about how you broadly define democracy and, and civic engagement, because um, I know a lot of people tell students, you know, just vote and that's it. And we always say we have a holistic approach, but I'd love to hear, you know, how would you broadly define civic engagement for young people? Oh, that's a big question. Um, I, I guess what I can say is my, my definition of democracy has expanded vastly as I've done more research on how the past worked and started reading young people's diaries from the past. I used to think it was, you know, putting a vote in a ballot box or, or entering in a voting machine. But what I did in the past was I read young people's diaries about how they got engaged in politics, you know, 13 year olds, 16 year olds, 20 year olds. And mm -hmm. it's almost never from a going to see an election. It's from their mother mentioning that an election was coming or an older cousin mentioning it or going to an event where somebody talks about politics or back in the day, hanging out in a saloon where people are arguing about politics. Democracy kind of trickles into our lives socially before it gets to the, the big main event of actually voting. And for people who are denied the right to vote in the past, women, people under 21, many African-Americans, they're still engaged in democracy, even though they can't actually vote, right? So the, the world of democracy is just a much bigger universe than, than that one act of voting. And I think it's, 
that was a very different time, but I think it's useful to kind of keep that mindset today that we build in our, our civic engagement and our civic consciousness much younger than we can actually participate or, or run for office or whatever. So think about 12 year olds, 10 year olds, eight year olds. When, you're, when adults are talking about politics, bring young people into the conversation. When you are a young person in a room with adults talking about an election, ask questions about what they think and how they're going to vote. We, we, we've been able to see from political science data that the more people talk about politics, the more they hear about it in their own life, especially from mentors, coaches, teachers, family, friends, people they actually know in their own life, as well as social media and campaigns and all that, they're more likely to vote and they're more likely to vote in, in huge numbers. So we can build in kind of a democratic engagement well before somebody is trying to decide which, which candidate to vote for. And I'll also say, just going back to that last question a bit, I do, as a, as a curator, go to a lot of campaign offices to get objects from current campaigns. And it's amazing how many young people you see in the offices of candidates who are behind the scenes running things. They're already kind of in the building. It's, it's just a question of getting the, the agency and the engagement, you know? Uh, so it's, I, think we're, I think we're closer to young people playing a real huge role in politics than, than sometimes we, we acknowledge. We're, we're pretty close. It's, and this generation, uh, Gen Z and also millennials, their turnout is up, their engagement is up. I think instead of, we used to tell a negative story about, oh, young people aren't engaged. I think there's a lot of reason for optimism and progress and momentum right now. So just keep up the good work, I guess, and engage, yeah. I have a follow-up question for you, John. It, so from a historical perspective, what do you think is the best example you've seen of a young people street movement uh, that's translated into the electoral process? Yeah, there's this one I really love that I never heard about. And since I've heard about it, it's, I read about it all the time now. Uh, they were called the Wide Awakes. In, in the election of 1860, it's the election right before the Civil War, Abe Lincoln is running for the president in the North, uh, opposing the expansion of slavery. And they get this huge youth movement going where young people march at night in support of Abe Lincoln. They get hundreds of thousands of marchers to kind of demonstrate support. They revolutionize politics. It's being run by a couple of kids in their early 20s who are organizing this vast national movement. They get Abe Lincoln elected. You know the knock-on effects of that, right? The Civil War, the end of slavery. It all comes from the effort of a couple 20-year-olds in, in Connecticut who kind of get it on the ground movement going and it just builds from there until it's in you know, Missouri and San Francisco and all across the nation. Uh, there's a little bit of a movement to bring that back today. I, it just shows the power of young people that there's so much potential energy there. Once it gets directed towards a cause, it can alter history. I love that. Well, so then Representative Jones to your earlier point about people who are maybe in this session right now listening and considering running for office, what would be your advice to them? Yeah, uh, let, let me also add uh, to John's point that my office is full of young people who are helping me get to a point where just a month or so ago, Axios rated me the most active freshman in the United States Congress, including both the House and the Senate. You know, when I look at like my chief of staff, my legislative director, all of these, all my legislative aides, I mean, just incredible, my district representatives up in Westchester and Rockland, uh, these are largely young people who are hard at work, who share my values, uh, who want and dream of a brighter future for this country and for my district and who are just doing incredible work that's being recognized. Uh, and it's also true of the many hundreds of volunteers on my, you know, what was really an improbable campaign for Congress when I look at all the odds that were stacked against me. Um, so uh, I would encourage people who are thinking of uh, running for office to meet with people who are in elected office and learn from them about what it takes to be successful. Um, but also, you know, speak to young people about, um, about joining the campaign. You know, you have to make sure you have like community investment, right? You, you wanna make sure that like when you do run for something that there's gonna be a group of folks there to support you. And at first it may feel lonely, it did for me, um, but you know, if you have a core group, uh, it you'll you'll grow that over time as you continue to connect with people in your district. Um, and and so, don't be discouraged. Don't think that you're too young or too inexperienced. I had never held elected office 
before I got to Congress. Uh, and I feel very confident in saying uh, that uh, I am doing a, a better job than many people who have held elected office before they got to this place. Uh, <laughs> All right, say it, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Um, are there any last parting words that you would give for young people who are watching right now who kind of wonder about um, the utility of their efforts I mean, this is the, the big thing that we, we've we heard, and I completely agree with you, John, that um, young people are showing up and showing out. So definitely we're, we're changing the narrative about that. But there is this, this dialogue that I've heard a lot about, um, you know, street movements and, and protests and uh, how it translates and, and, you know, the historic component or even, you know, whether millennials like me need to just get out of the way entirely because we're holding up space and the whole system should be burnt to the ground. Um, but I'd love to hear from both of you and just any parting words you have for the young people who are listening right now. John, we can start with you. Yeah, uh, tell me tell me if this sounds too adversarial or whatever. I, I, I guess what I would say is that um, the people who are supporting ideas that you may oppose have faith in the system and they're turning out to vote. And the 45 year olds or the 60 year olds who are maybe voting against your interests, they're mm -hmm. engaged. And, and if, you, if, you, if you wanna have a voice in this, you have to engage if everyone else is participating and the young people sit on the sidelines their voices just aren't going to get heard and we've seen this in history when people engage young people 15 year olds 20 year olds part participate we've seen the turnout we've seen the numbers it's we've seen the the events and the significance that can come with it um i we all know now that there's a cap capability there just just go for it it's all i can say don't don't worry about it too much participate it'll I can't guarantee that it'll work in your individual favor, but we know historically that it'll benefit all of us. Mm, excellent. Representative Jones? Yeah, John's absolutely right. I mean, the people who are denying climate change, uh, who don't want black and brown and young people and working people in this country to vote, uh, who, who feel like we should do nothing about the, the cost of a college education and the crushing student debt that exists, uh, the folks who want to undermine free and fair elections, uh, they are engaged, okay? They are voting, they are turning out, they are being activated, and we do a great disservice, if I can still consider myself young, we do a great disservice uh, to, I think, the future of this country, uh, to our generations, uh, and to, you know, the, the, the ongoing effort to uh, bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. Uh, if we just sit on our hands and and don't fight back at the ballot box uh, and and through protest and and activism in the streets uh, and through uh, engaging elected officials, including people we don't agree with, but who need to know that there will be consequences at the ballot box if they don't do the right thing and don't represent your interests. So do not wait to do good things and get engaged right now uh, because as you can see from looking around you, uh, we are in the fight of our lives. Yeah, I think that's a great place to leave it. Thank you both so much for your participation. We're just so grateful. Um, and thank you for all that you do and continue the hard work.